Hi, Rudy. Can you hear us? Yeah, you all look very fine. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Why I Believe on My Road to Hope and Peace. Thank you for joining us this evening. One of the best football and faith movies ever made is the movie Rudy. The story of Daniel Rudy Rudiger's determination to fulfill his dream and play football at Notre Dame University. Rudy grew up in a steel mill town where most people ended up working, but he wanted to play football at Notre Dame instead. There were only a couple of problems. His grades were a little low, his athletic skill was were poor, and he only had only he was only half the size of the other players. But he had the drive, the faith in God, and the support of others, which allowed him to overcome all odds. After tremendous work, he earned a place on the Notre Dame football scout team. He was allowed to dress for his final game, where he sacked the quarterback on the last play of the game. He is famous for being one of the only fighting Irish players to ever be carried off the field. Rudy graduated from Notre Dame with a degree in sociology. He's an Emmy Award winning motivational speaker and author. Rudy has a warm, compassionate spirit and has dedicated his life to inspiring others to never give up. He offers them hope by helping them believe in themselves and realize that anything is possible. Rudy, we are so grateful to have you join us this evening. Well, we, you know, I must say this. We love you guys. And, <laughs> and uh, this is true. By our faith, it's not by sight. That's for sure. But unfortunately, you get to see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad and here I am, the real Rudy. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy when you, when you hear people, is there a real Rudy? Is there a Rudy? And when people have that doubt, they're thrown like, uh, I'll never forget, it's like a wave and the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Does that sound familiar? James yep. 1, 6. Yep. You know, so you think about that and you say, wow, people just don't want to believe sometimes. But that's why we got to walk out there and be warriors of Jesus Christ to let them know we are believers. And by that, we are servants of Jesus Christ. And that when we do that, great things happen. And that's when you give hope. I love that. Thank you. That's a great introduction. <laughs> just, just to let everyone know, this is live. So your questions from the audience oh, uh, cool. are appreciated. So just send them in the chat and uh, we'll get some of them a little later. So Rudy, let's start a little bit with your story. We'd love to hear a little bit of it. Share with us how your faith in God, your belief in miracles, and your determination to help you accomplish what many thought was not possible. Well, it didn't start out like that. Let's put it <laughs> that way. Uh, Cause I'm one of 14 and you're given a lot of different fear factors when you grow up through parents, through friends, through teachers. They tell you what you can't do through fear. They tell you what you can be through fear. They don't tell you you should dream because dreams are for fools because dreams don't come true because they never accomplished their dreams. Those are the people within your culture you have to stay away from. And they're sometimes hard to get rid of because they're going to be around you whether you like it or not. That's where your faith comes in. That's where it needs to be strong. And that's why I call warriors of Jesus is really there. So you have to develop that faith. How do you do that? Well, <clears throat> first, you must always believe in you. That's the gift the Lord has given you. If you don't believe in yourself, it probably won't happen because you're going to have doubt your whole life. You got to get rid of doubt, goofy thinking, goofy people. Get rid of all the people who tell you what you can be, what you can't be. Go where you want to be. And that's the secret. And that's the hard journey because your journey is a process and things change along the way. Perseverance steps in. James 1, 3, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And that's what it is all the time. So when you're tested, you know your perseverance got to step forward. And you're going to be temptation along the way because you think people who are your friends who really are not really telling you or supporting you or empowering you become the people you want to be because they have doubt. So you have to see that and see that, but you find that through faith. And when you believe without seeing, like I said earlier, 
you're going to see life differently. But that's the process I'm talking about because we're human beings. Because when I grew up, we were told certain things just so we wouldn't do it out of fear. And that's the hard thing to get rid of, that stuff. Uh, and you're challenged with that. Goofy, I call it goofy thoughts, goofy thinking. Uh, and it comes from your father, your mother, sometimes your brothers, your sisters, your teachers, your coaches. They all do that because they think this is a way to do it. But when you empower people, like you missionaries, here's your key. Here's where you can change people's thoughts. When you change people's thoughts, not by preaching, not by lecturing, but by doing and by serving. And that's when people start believing in you. When they start believing in you, they start following you. But the key is you got to know why you were there. And that's what I was. I had to believe this was the right journey for me. But you go through that. High school was rough for me. I didn't think I was smart enough. That's okay, because I always thought I was, but I kept believing I was. But I had a learning disorder called dyslexia. So that that gave me issues. And when you have those, boy, what happened here? Um, yeah, my phone's, okay. You guys all right? Can you we still got you. You're, you're, oh, we've man. got you. We've oh, got you. We've got you. You know, I, I'm a technology challenge, just so you guys know that. <laughs> That's all right. I guess I was challenged with my, I wanted to go to Notre Dame, not because it was Notre Dame, because it gave hope to my father. Uh, When I saw that, because we grew up in a large family, he worked three jobs to support the family. But when Notre Dame won, he got hope. And I saw the gleam in his eye. And I want to give that gift back to my father. But you can't give it back if you can't go to give him hope to where he believes in Notre Dame, the university, the football team. I found it's not about sports. It really, people don't really care whether you win a national championship or whether you score touchdowns. But did you make the team? Did you stay with the team? Did you quit? Were you part of something big? I had to learn that through the process because people don't remember what you know, they remember who you are and what you did and how you earned it. That's where the you missionaries come through. People remember you for what you've done for them and how you help them, help them believe through the tough times. And and they're, sometimes they need to be healed. Sometimes they're losing a, a loved one and you're there for them or they just need help moving some things in the house or whatever it may be, you're there for them. That's your secret. You're not there knocking on the door saying, we want to talk to you about Jesus. They're going to slam that door faster in your face than you've ever seen. But they will bring you to their homes when they know you're serving serving people and you're serving Jesus. It's a big difference. And that's what I saw in my journey. When I started serving and became selfless instead of selfish, things start changing. Uh, It's an amazing transition of faith when you start believing in that but that's where you're challenged i think so i could go on and why i got went to notre dame why are you there that's the question (laughs) why it's not about me it's about you uh i would like to have questions from you because my story you could see on the silver screen that took years to put together but it was a lot of faith and a lot of angels that came into my life to help me get that done. But one story is good, but your story is better. I believe that. I think your story is better because you're challenged today with some tough times. And uh, hey, let's see how strong your faith is and let's see how strong your belief is and let's see how strong you are willing to fight the battle. So ask some questions. I could get you some answers. I think that's a better way of doing it. Here, here's a question. Um, how has your faith in Christ and your belief in miracles helped you uh, get through even your struggles even today? Well, you, you see miracles every day, by the way, uh, yeah. through uh, all kinds of people and all kinds of things. You see, like when, uh, for an example, 
it is a great example. The fact that I got Notre Dame, that's a miracle. Uh, because I graduated third in my class from the bottom. So how does that happen? People helped you get there. People helped you um, understand why you should be here. And that's, to me, those are miracles. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about raising from the dead. You know, I'm talking about real life journeys and miracles. A miracle is that you believe in people that want to help you. That's the miracle. And you see real angels in your life that could help you get there. That's because you eliminated all the goofy thinking that people given you. You eliminate that by not hanging around those goofy thoughts. Therefore, they don't come. They will pop up every now and then. But if you're not around it, you don't believe it. That's a big difference. So keep sticking to the people who believe in what you're doing. And those are the miracles, believe it, uh, in the faith. So miracles are every day. Um, People, uh, you know, they're sometimes they're sick and they get better because they believe. They have that will to believe. That's the miracle. Uh, the joy of a miracle is awesome. The glorious joy for you receiving and the result of your faith in the salvation of souls. I mean, I never forget my father uh, when he when I got in Notre Dame. He, he he couldn't believe the fact that I was still there. But when I graduated, he understood that, wow, you did this. See, that's the miracle of faith. Um, and that's what you give back. That's the hope you give people. To me, that's a miracle. That is a miracle. Um, in the movie, you have a number of people who helped you achieve your dream. Can you tell us about Fortune, the groundskeeper, and his impact on you? Or what about Father Kavanaugh? Father Kavanaugh. Yeah. Well, listen, you have mentors. You need mentors in your life. Sometimes you gotta go to the people who don't know you. People who know you will give you doubt because they know you. They know your bad habits. They know what you can't do. But the people who don't know you, who believe, it goes back to faith again, not seeing. When they see a good heart, they will empower that. And that's, again, where miracles happen. And Father Kavanaugh was a miracle to me and an angel to me because I knocked on his door at 11 o'clock at night. And the question I had was not why I didn't get Notre Dame, what more can I do? So he set the, he set the tone for getting to the right people so they can help me get there. See, when you ask why, you're gonna get all the reasons why you can't. But if you ask, what can I do? They're gonna give you all the things you have to do to get there, hard work, discipline, structure, more, more, uh, I call semesters uh, at Holy Cross, get an associate degree, graduate cum laude. I've never had a B in my life. I had D's on my life. I graduated with A's at Holy Cross. That's because people helped me get there. You got to do first things first. You can't go play football unless you get the good grades to get to Notre Dame. See, that's always the challenge. It's like a star. So, far far away it seemed you see Notre Dame but it seems so far away because of that that one element of grades and that's that star that seems so far away but it's actually right here if you allow your thoughts and your perseverance take precedent over all the doubt that people are trying to give you perseverance is a quality through faith by the way um and, and that comes through because it just it's automatic when you believe in your dream, it's automatic. When you know what you're doing, it's automatic. It just comes. You can't look for it. It's there. It's undisputable. It's just there. I can't tell you there. Uh, there's so many righteousness moments in your life when you do this. So all I'm saying to you is we started with faith and we started with not seeing. If you have faith, you don't need the sight. Like at Notre Dame, I didn't need to see Notre Dame. I just knew I felt it. And when you feel the power of a spiritual feeling, then you're in the right track and the right culture and the right people come into your life. That's where the janitor came in, uh, the little mentors. That's where Father Kavanaugh came in and he encouraged other mentors. You can't do anything yourself. You can't, you just can't do it yourself. 
It's impossible. You need help. And uh, by the way, I don't know, even though you know I was in the Navy, you probably didn't know that, uh, military. And that came from an accident that happened on my job after I graduated from high school. There was a, uh, there's a system you must follow and you must follow that system of safety. And you can't take shortcuts with machines and cars and things or driving the, down the one way street because you think it's cool or doing a uh, real quick fix on a machine. Those you don't take chances with, but with your dream, you could take risks, but with that type, you don't. And that's where my friend, he took a risk with the wrong risk. Uh, he took a risk at work. He took a shortcut, ended his life. And that's when my life changed. That's when I gave myself up to the Lord. That when I came back from the Navy, uh, and he passed right in front of me. I, I, life is too short, no more shortcuts. Now that was a moment that changed my life. We don't want that to happen to you. So what, what we say, what happened to me doesn't need to happen to you, but you can have these experiences in different ways. Um, and you must know there is a rebirth of thoughts when you think like this, and you can overcome all these crazy thoughts people give you. Uh, you know, there is a God and they're not him. Remember that. Yep. Uh, and when you believe that, uh, great things happen again, because you gotta have that connection with God. And you know, his son Jesus died for us. So, and you know, those things, you gotta believe that. You don't have to see it uh, and just believe it. And that's why it works. So. I don't, I'm not sure why it happened to me. I only know those miracles happened because I believed. Thank you. I love that. I love that. And in the, one of the things about the movie that's portrayed so beautifully is your perseverance, you know, and I think that mm -hmm. was based on your faith. One of the yes. questions, one of the questions just came in was, how did you feel when your team carried you off the field? I felt very embarrassed, by the way. At that moment, uh, it was an embarrassing moment for me because no one's ever been carried off that field. And why are they carrying me off? What, what, what's going on? Set, put me down, I yelled. And they said, no, no, we're taking you all the way to the tunnel. Those are the guys who believed in me. Those are the guys who were inspired by my work ethic. Those were the guys who were inspired by, I come to work every day, I come to the teamwork every day and didn't complain or whine. And couple of those guys wanted to quit the team but never quit the team they stayed with the team so you don't know who you're touching by your work ethic and by your belief and by your faith so it's very important to do that you don't have to go and preach just do the work go to work do the work do your job and people see that they see that you're set back but you get back up you know that's the food that's the bread of life by the way when you do that and when that happens when you know the hunger you have for why you're there, uh, people see that. And it, it's a belief level again. It's just, you believe you belong there too. It's just not for them, it's for you too. Once you believe that, uh, you work differently, you act differently, but you sometimes you're gonna go through some challenges in life to understand that. I hope you understand that. Yeah, for sure. We have another question that's come in. They ask, did the movie accurately reflect your emotions when you finally got that letter saying you were accepted into Notre Dame? Tell us about that feeling and yeah. how it affected you. It, it affected me. It was like a monkey jumping off your back that, you know, you showed all the doubters you did it. You showed all those teachers who told you you'll never go to Notre Dame because you're not smart enough. You wanted to go and show them. Uh, what you did, but instead you just kept going. Then you made a movie, you showed them through the movie and I'm sure they saw it and I'm sure they understand it. And they still may be doubting you, but I don't go back and ask them if they liked it. That's not my job. That's not my job to go up to people and ask them, hey, did you like the movie? Or when you were at Notre Dame or you're going through this, you know what I've been through to get here? You don't tell them what you've been through. You don't tell them your journey. Let them see your journey. And just like the missionaries, you don't tell people where you've been, why you're here. They see you. 
They see your servant leadership. They see that you love and care. I'll never forget when I went to the White House to meet a president and show the movie in the White House. No one cared what I knew. They knew how much I cared because there was courage involved, a commitment involved. There was a tremendous amount of character involved. And all the winners know that. To get to where you need to go, you need character, courage, and commitment. And you need to contribute to the point of helping people get to where they need to go. So contribution was a big key. And the winners know that. People know that. And sometimes you got to help people find it, like a discovery. Uh, Rudy, the movie was a discovery moment for a lot of people of faith. It wasn't faith pushed in your face. Uh, it was just a discovery. And that's where we need to be. Let people discover. Don't tell people why they should do this. Let them discover why they should do it. You, it's, it's a crazy thing. People ask me all the time, why are you doing this? Never mind why I'm doing this. It's my personal journey and it's not yours. But you, you can't say that to him. He just smiles and say, I love you, my brother. I got to keep moving forward. And that's what you need to do. Uh, so I've chosen the way of faithfulness and I set my heart uh, by that. And I think that's part of Psalms. Uh, 11930. It's the truth. It's the law. And that's the way it goes. You, you know, listen, I had a lot of people doubt me and they still doubt me today. I had a guy doubt me the other day, believe it or not. And I, and I looked at her and said, I love you, brother. <laughs> he didn't know how to react to that. So my whole point is people that never fulfilled that level where you're at will always doubt you and ask you why. You don't need to answer why just keep doing what you're doing because you know it's right that's your faith and that's what it's about and that's where perseverance comes in that's where courage comes in that's for everything that you need it's automatic god's given it's in you already you just got to bring it out you don't you don't read it you don't ask people to read it to you. it just comes when you're like people feel it and that's why it's powerful Thank you. Um, one of the things I would love to hear is um, what, how, where, where did you get the motivation or even the, the inspiration more like to make your story into movie? How did that come about? Yeah, that's a great question because I never planned it. One, but God has a way of planting seeds through other people. Now watch this. There was this after the football game. I'm sitting in the locker room taking my jersey off no name on the jersey. I'm the only guy with no name. And, uh, but everybody chanted my name. Why was that? Because I had a lot of relationships in that stadium with the students, because I earned those relationships. And they were excited the fact that I got to dress and got in the game. So they start chanting Rudy. Because they chanted Rudy, other people start chanting Rudy. And that went through the whole stadium. Now, a lot of people were chanting, they didn't know why. And that's what the sports writer wanted to know. Who are you? Why are they chanting Rudy? Well, they didn't know I boxed. They didn't know I was on the Notre Dame student government when I was at Holy Cross. They didn't know I was at Holy Cross trying to get my way. All the friendships I developed and the relationships I developed, they wanted me at Notre Dame. So that's what helped. A lot of people call it differently. I position myself with the right people to do the right things. Uh, a lot of people, the negative people, will go, oh, you manipulated your way to Notre Dame. How can you manipulate your way to Notre Dame when you need an ace? You know, you need to get good. That means you had to work, dude. You know, that's what you want. But you can't tell them that. But they will always give you that doubt. And, and, and in the movie idea, when that sports writer asked me, who are you? How do you answer that? I said, I'm just Rudy. This is what I wanted to do and I did it. He said, this, would ne this never happens at Notre Dame when I just witnessed. It only happens in Hollywood. That's the seed that was planted by a sports writer, not knowing it was gonna be a major motion picture. I didn't know that either. After that was told to me, I kind of thought about it years later after I saw another inspirational sports movie called Rocky. 
And if you ever watch Rocky, the first Rocky, he always blessed himself. And he always had faith. But he even doubted himself, even through his preparation, when he got his second chance, he doubted himself up to that one moment that he should never have doubt. That's when he walked into that arena the night of the fight and saw Apollo Creed had his trunks on where it was supposed to be his. He said, wow, he's got my uniform on. Those are mine. And he says, that kind of gave him a little bit of doubt until he got hit. Then he went into action because he prepared for that moment. That's the key. It doesn't happen to you get knocked down or hit and you spring up with faith. Said, I belong here too. And that's because of preparation. So preparation was a big key to the movie. What does that mean, Rudy? Well, I was preparing because I was living a movie at Notre Dame. And not knowing it was going to be a movie, I was living a dream, living a movie. And the emotion of that letter and the emotion of everything in that moment when I got in, it's all true. When I got to dress for the game, my teammates went in. Uh, one teammate went in and asked if I could dress and gave up his uniform. See, those are the things that happen in real life. But in movie sense, we have to embellish in what we call composite, and you have to make it more, uh, uh, you only have so many seconds to tell that moment, so you have to do it differently. But it's still, it's the spirit of the truth that we showed. And life is that too, your story, your life is a story. You're, so you have to learn how to tell your story through moments and through composites. If you tell your whole story, people get bored. Uh, you, you, you people you lose people uh, you got to entertain people in a way that they want to listen that's why i always say the missionaries are awesome when they're servant leaders because they're people of action people of reality people of faith and and people feel that the righteousness will live by faith and people see that and people understand that and that's where i lived at notre dame and that's why the movie happened because I start meeting people who believed in that, who wanted it to succeed, but it took many, many years. Even Notre Dame did not see it right away for nine years. Uh, there's certain, there's the athletic department that couldn't understand why they would do a movie of a guy who walked on. It wasn't about a football player. It wasn't about a football game. It was about faith and a journey and belief and overcoming that you could be there too. And it's, it's the dreams for everybody. Heaven's for everybody, just not for the other guy. It's, you know, the, I'll never forget the priest said, Notre Dame's not for everybody. I said, you mean heaven's not for everybody, Father? And that shut him down at that point. So when people tell you this is not for everybody, it is if you want it, if you deserve it, if you prepare for it, if you live it, that's the key. That's why the movie happened because of along the way, ordinary people. I mean, ordinary people help get the movie made. A hotel manager, a janitor, uh, a mail carrier helped me get to the right people. But that was through, I had that perseverance. I had that faith. I kept going back out to Hollywood, even when the darkest moments. I mean, there's many dark moments in our journey, but you can't give up. You know, the darkest it is, there's going to be light at the end of that tunnel. A lot of people rather watch TV and get all the bad news from spin jockeys, I call them. And the only thing you need to do is put your head in that Bible, put your head in the scriptures, and put your head around people who really believe in the faith. And you just, you won't, you, you'll shut the TV. I listen to it. It's nonsense. Everything is nonsense. People are trying to manipulate your mind in business, in your church, in your family when they're not believers. So don't hate them. Love them. And uh, when you show love, the haters become lovers. So when you show hate, it, it's a whole bad deal. So that's why we got to love more. And that's well, what I did at Notre Dame and Hollywood. And the right people came around. So that's kind of like the long short of the story. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. There's another question here. Um, someone would like to know what you would say to someone 
who has zero motivation after asking for help in their prayers um, and not seeing that there's any help coming their way? Well, that's the challenge, right? Uh, help them every time you see them in trouble, help them. Keep helping them. Don't preach to them. That's the worst thing you can do is preach to them. Love them. Show love. Show caring. If they, whatever they need, just get it for them. And they start believing. Uh, th that's the key because people, look at, they're conditioned through failures. And it's okay to fail. Failure we learn from. If you're not, if you're not failing, you're not trying. People think if you're failing, you're never going to make it. No, you are going to make it because you're learning from your failures and your mistakes, by the way. Mistakes are okay. Don't get on someone because they make a mistake. Learn from it. Say, that's okay. Well, you know, we'll find another way. Instead of crucifying or justifying your stack, and, hey, I'm, I'm the guy. I never make that mistake. Well, <laughs> You're not infallible either. I mean, you're going to make a mistake. What's going to show them that you can overcome that too, but give them empowerment at that moment. That's a tough one. So here's here, going right along with that. Another person sent in this question. What's mm -hmm. something that has challenged your faith? Has there been moments where your faith has been challenged? Oh, I think we're all challenged. Uh, whether you're big believers or not, you can get, uh, you know, you're challenged through death. You're challenged through big mistakes financially. You're challenged through uh, the economy. You're challenged through, I mean, you're going to be challenged. And that's where your, your faith must be strong. And prayer is very important. You have to pray. Uh, you just don't pray in church. You pray when you get up. You pray when you're in the shower. You pray when you put your clothes on. You say little prayers that keep you going and watch your attitude change. It's not your color. It's not your race. It's your attitude. So change that attitude. And that's done through positive thinking. That's done through something being positive. Find something positive. I have a dog. And dogs are unconditional love. And and. No, the worst thing that can happen to you is you go home, someone um, takes your mistake and make you feel bad about it. But dog, he won't do that. He'll lick you. <laughs> He'll love you, you know? So understand that. Just get around things that make you feel good and powerful. I use my dog. Thank you so much for sharing that. Here's another question for you. Um, how do you see God's hand most in the journey that you've had so far? All of it. It's all of it. Uh, my mother had 14 of us, and she was on her deathbed three times because of having the children. Uh, and I saw her come back and stronger because she believed and she prayed. We said the rosary all the time, uh, and we prayed all the time. And, and, you know, we did the things we were supposed to do, but that doesn't say we're going to be good kids because you're still going to hang around the goofballs because they're at school and they come in all different disguises. But you have to learn. Who, my dad saved my life one day because I tried to help a goofball and I was going to try to sneak out of the house to help the goofball. My dad called me said, you get back in that house. You're not going anywhere. So your dad's discipline and structure saved my life because that same guy was trying to help got killed that night by people he wanted to help. He got the fight and they killed him. I would have been there too if my dad wasn't there. So listen to your parents. They know where the boogeyman is. Uh, they made the mistakes. Whether you understand it or not, you don't know more than your parents. They have lived life. So when your parents say to you, you don't need to go there. You don't need to have that. You know what? Just know they're doing it because they love you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rudy. Rudy, I've heard we've heard that uh, you have a strong belief in angels. Uh, can yes, you share with us? Can you share with us some of your feelings about that? Because I think that. I think really yeah. I think angels are all. They come in all different versions of angels. I call them. You know, uh, my writer who wrote Rudy hated Notre Dame. And he was uh, agnostic until he came to Notre Dame and he believed there was a God because things happen at Notre Dame that wasn't supposed to happen for the movie that should never happen, but happened. 
So he says, oh my God, this is a God loop. He starts saying that, right? And everybody on set start believing. And it's because of all the little people who help great things happen. Those are the angels who believed in it. See, God puts people, he works through people. Um, and people who really are believers, those are the angels. And the other angels are like, for an example, I had a hotel manager that believed in me so much when I was finally told by Notre Dame that we're not interested and we're not going to do a movie. The, so Rudy, we love you, but that's it. And that hotel manager says, don't give up on that. My brother, you need to talk to my brother. Now, my, his brother did the movie Hoosiers. So you never know who knows someone. So relationships are very important. So he was an angel by getting me to his brother who believed I had a movie idea who got me to the writer and the writer that I was going to go see didn't believe in me or my story or Notre Dame, but he didn't tell his brother that. But I also went out to California to meet him because I believe he would meet me, but he didn't want to meet me. I didn't know that. And I stood in a restaurant for three hours waiting for him that never showed up. So I walked out of the restaurant and an angel shows up because I believe I should meet him. I believe this should happen. And a mailman was smiling and whistling. And I thanked him for that. And he says, I've never been thanked. No one's ever thanked me. I said, no, man, you, you got gratitude. I needed that moment. He said, where are you from? I told him I was from Indiana and he was from Michigan. He had gratitude because he could have been passing that mail out in the snow and the rain and the sleet and the dogs chasing him. But hey, beautiful, sunny California. He's happy. So I thank him for that. Now think about that. How many times have you thanked someone for giving you joy or having that joy around you? And they don't know why. But then they say, why are you thanking me? Because you made me feel good again. I needed you. That's an angel. And you tell him your story. That angel comes to life and takes you to the writer's house that stood you up. You don't know who's going to help you, but you have to give love back and gratitude back. And all those things, that's how angels show up. You won't recognize them unless you clear your mind of your goofy thoughts. I love, I love that phrase, goofy thoughts. Um, I, I have so many little quotes that you've given us that I've been writing down. Do you have a favorite quote that you love to share? Always believe is one mm. dream big, never quit. Uh, and I, and that's kind of like, you got to dream big. Why small? now dreaming big means many different levels. Uh, my dream big was different than your dream big but you got to dream big. All I wanted to do is walk on the football field one time, make one tackle and one hit. And that was a big dream to me, but was small to the All-American who's playing. Now you think about that. What I had to do to go for that one tackle, one hit, one moment was a journey of a life. He didn't have that. He was entitled to his journey. I wasn't, and yet he still had to work, but he was inspired by my work ethic. So those are the special gifts that the good Lord's given you. You're one moment. If I would have quit when I saw my name on that dress list, I would never met you two or met the missionaries or met anybody in my life. So there's a reason why you go through these things and do the things you do. And people say, well, some people get lucky and make a lot of money. Well, that's not why we live to make a lot of money. We live to take care of ourselves and our families. If you do make a lot of money, you have to know where to put it, where to give it, and how to take care of yourself. So if you live in abundance, you got to know how to give back and take care of the right things as well. So there's different ways, different levels. So uh, we all have our... Uh, there's a guy I met the other day at the grocery store. He didn't have a home, but he inspired me because he believed. I didn't judge him because he was poor and judge him because he didn't have a home, but he showed love. He didn't want any money for me. He just thanked me because I was nice to him. Those are great moments. Those, yeah. are, those are great moments. Rudy, you're so positive. Have you ever 
had a moment of doubt or discouragement? Yes, of course, we all do. And that's where your faith comes in, a prayer comes in, a little moment of silence. Uh, you, you need to take your, get away from everything and, and, and just meditate. Those are the special feelings that come back to you. Well, Rudy, we uh, know you have another thing coming up here in a few minutes. Is there anything that you would like to share with our audience that has helped you on your road to hope and peace? Well, you know, just keep believing. That's the key. Uh, you know, remember I said in the beginning, sight is not the deal. It's believing is the deal. When you believe in something, you don't have to see it. You believe in him and you're filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. And people see that. So when you do that, it's an unbelievable moment in your life. Uh, that that that's just transforms and goes out and makes people feel good, like the mailman, like the janitor. Uh, those are special. They they believe they wanted wanted to give that back in a special way. So there's people in my life uh, that the lady at the grocery store or Home Depot that's and thank you for coming up for buying something, you know, because she has a job. You know, little moments like that are awesome. Uh, and you're going to get people who are going to give you the doubt. They're mad because they're working. They're mad because they're here. Just smile and, and say something positive. And I think everything is possible if you believe. The impossible becomes possible when you believe. Uh, my journey was impossible to my family to my friends, because they saw all the mistakes I made and all the things I couldn't do. That, what can you do? What can you, it's not, and what can you know to do what you can do? That's the key. By the way, we need to get back to our skill sets. We need to get back to kids who believe in their skills, a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician, uh, a framer. We have to get back to all those skills. We're losing that. Education is not about regurgitation. Education is about learning what you need to know. That is so true. I, I have heard you say that getting what you want is only a problem if you have nowhere to go next. So Rudy, where are you going next? Don't ever ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> because that's my journey, my personal dream. So I don't tell people because I don't want them to steal my joy. Does that make sense? <laughs> that does. It sure does. <laughs> I, yeah, I also love you said that dreaming is a lifetime occupation. I think that yes, you, it is. you have shown that over and over tonight. Thank you. Rudy, this has been absolutely wonderful. We just really appreciate that you've taken the time for us and for our audience. Thank you, everybody, for joining another yes. episode of My Road to Home Peace. We've been inspired by our friend, Rudy Rudiger, and we are so grateful that he has taken the time for us.